Hey guys, Tony G with Get Outdoors Marketing. Got a table full of stuff here. We're gonna explain kind of the method to the madness here. We've we've had the opportunity to, to pre-plan all of the wiring, um, get, get all our units prior to the boat coming so that we can sit down and, and start to put things together. And it's, it's almost gonna be like kind of a plug and play deal where the boat's coming in a couple weeks, but we're ready for it, more than ready for it versus just grabbing things out of the box and then kind of sitting in the boat trying to figure it out. So we've spent, spent some time putting together a wire schematic, figuring out, okay, here we're gonna run our wires uh, from the back to the council. We chose to use this particular wire here. It's an eight gauge um, tin marine wire. We put a 30 amp breaker in here. So what we're gonna do is, is pull this through to the council and we'll have a separate circuit that will go from the back tube that will plug into our fuse panel here. And this allows us to, to have a dedicated circuit that powers our fuse panel that in turn, all of our pieces and parts will run through this fuse panel. We'll have the helix unit, we'll have the, the networking box, the hydro wave, the front units, all the pieces and parts that are on the electronic side of, of the boat will run through here. We will have a shut off here. So at any given time in the evening or whatever, when we're not using the boat, we can shut that whole circuit off, which is good. Some little things that we've done, you know, here you'll see that we've we've uh, gone through and labeled all of our wires in multiple places. So depending on if they're coiled up or whatnot, we can still see what this is. This happens to be a Helix 10 side imaging mega power cord. So no matter if it's co coiled up or whatnot, I can still at a quick glance see what that particular wire is. And we do all this because down the road after this boat shakes around and things like that, we're gonna, you know, we might encounter an issue and it'll be, the, the more time we've gone through up front with labeling and things like that, it'll be much easier to, to get immediately to the situation. So we have a fuse panel here. This has multiple different blocks to be able to, to hook in, all different kinds of fuse sizes. So depending on what we're powering up there, we're good there, we can handle that. This is 14 gauge wire here that we're running. This will run from the bow to the back to the council, power up here. Uh, we kind of pre-cut that based on a, a friend of mine's boat, same boat. We were able to measure it off that way. So we're doing all this for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, we want that dedicated circuit in there. Because these units are getting so much bigger and they take more power, we do not want to run this through the boat. And as the amperage uh, lowers in the boat, it's going to cause problems on the units. We want a separate unit. We oversized our carrier wire here so that we've got maximum power coming to this circuit here, this, the uh, control panel here so that we can power these units and they can run um, the be absolute best that they can run. And the second thing is we're doing all this in the, in the name of interference, right? That's kind of the big word that um, nobody likes to get in their boat and in interference, you know, with, with all of this shielded wire and, and uh, proper connectors and things like that, we're hoping to eliminate any of that kind of stuff. So. We're really lucky to be able to have the time to, to put all of this together. It all takes a little bit of time, but the, the, the devil's in the details and in the prep and putting this together. We've got a good plan. I feel comfortable about this. The day the boat hits, we can start stringing all this wire and, and we'll rig that boat 